And hello and welcome to Hindsight Tonight. I'm Damian Musiani, and here's your news. Leading off, over a period of two days last week, the Supreme Court managed to make it tougher for minorities to attend U.S. colleges and tougher to pay for it if they get accepted. On Thursday, in a 6-3 vote, the justices ruled that admissions programs at colleges like Harvard University can no longer use racial prejudice in their efforts to combat racial prejudice. Uh -huh. Got that? That's a catch-22. Very Old Testament stuff here. An eye for an eye. Don't kick my friend, because I'll break your leg if you do. Now, maybe that scenario conjures up a Charles Bronson vigilante umami taste in your mouth. But remember, a leg for a leg leaves everybody lame. But don't worry, because that same 6-3 majority SCOTUS vote came raining down again on Friday to kill off President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, so at least minorities shut out of college won't have to actually pay for it now. Okay, that's really not a silver lining at all. Media and celebrities cried foul all weekend long, but a recent USA Today poll showed that most of the country didn't support Biden's plan anyway. And Harvard's admission sheet shows a higher percentage of black, Asian, Native American, and Native Hawaiian students enrolled than in their overall representation in the United States. Whites make up 59% of the country, but only 40% at Harvard, so maybe affirmative action has already, dare we say, worked? One of the biggest defenders of AA and the first female Supreme Court justice ever, Sandra Day O'Connor herself, said in 2003 that during the 2020s, the need for racial preferences in college will no longer be necessary. You want to attack a revered and idolized, trailblazing female judge? That's on you. I'm just bringing you words in a box. If crazy serial killers are watching and reacting, <laughs> kindly take it up with them. But the notorious nine weren't through yet. They also ruled on Friday that a Colorado website designer, regardless of state law, can refuse to work for same-sex couples by simple preference. The artist in question, Lori Smith, said a gay man named Stuart inquired about her services in 2016 for his upcoming wedding to his boyfriend, Mike. The court basically said that if a web designer doesn't like gays, they don't have to provide service to gays. Only one problem, though. It turns out Stewart's not really gay. Huh? In fact, he's been happily married to a woman for the last 15 years and says he never contacted the plaintiff to begin with. That means that a major setback to the LGBTQIA plus movement was helped along by an apparently fabricated website request that nobody seemed to fact check until after the fact. <laughs> Still with us? Oh, did we mention the Supreme Court vote on this issue was, again, 6-3. to three. All of these cases were divided exactly along political lines, and the overall SCOTUS message this week seems to be, we will preserve your freedom at all costs, even if we have to take away your freedom to do it. Catch-22. And that's your news. Have a great week. Don't forget to like us and subscribe. And I'll see you next Sunday with Fresh Hindsight.